Welcome to the Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church of Memphis Incorporated YouTube channel. Thank you for choosing to spend a little time with us viewing our Sunday morning worship experience. I pray that you will receive something that will help you on your journey. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, teach us that you can use whoever you desire to display your holiness. And remind us that it is your son, Jesus Christ, that sets the standards for living a life of holiness. And it is in his name that we pray. Amen. Our study for today is found in Luke chapter 17, verse 11 through 19. That's Luke chapter 17, verse 11 through 19. And I'm reading the English Standard Version that reads, on the way to Jerusalem, he was passing along between Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered a village, he was met by 10 lepers who stood at a distance and lifted up their voices saying, Jesus, master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, go and show yourselves to the priest. And as they went, they were cleansed. Then one of them, when he saw that he had been healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. And he fell on his face at Jesus's feet, giving him thanks. He was a Samaritan. And then Jesus answered, were not 10 cleansed? Were, where are the nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. Uh, today we're going to talk about a Samaritan displayed holiness in thankfulness. A Samaritan displayed holiness in thankfulness. And if you you probably noticed by now that uh, quite a few of these sermons lately, uh, probably three or four, has been centered around certain Samaritans. It's bad when people that are not in the church or part of the group of believers uh, make us look bad because they do more of what God expects than we do. So let's step up our game. Now, this story is about 10 men with leprosy. In this case, one tenth of the 10 returned to Jesus to say thanks. This Samaritan teaches us a lesson of what our duty is. It's our duty to tell God thanks when he blesses us in any of the many ways that he does. When we give thanks to the Lord out of obedience to his command. We are only doing our duty. This Samaritan was commanded to go and show himself to the priest. But instead, he uh, went beyond what was his duty and returned to show his gratitude to the greatest healing uh, or the great healing of Jesus uh, in his life. Now, holiness has much to do with conduct, and clearly the divine choice has in view also an actual life change, uh, the molding of our character. What may this be described as progressive sanctification? So it behooves us to examine the second aspect of holiness, namely uh, an actual improvement in our manner of life. Though believers must be involved in this process, their involvement is not something praiseworthy, as though it could become a contributing factor to our acceptance by a holy God. Salvation itself is already ours as a gift of God's grace. But by virtue of being born into the family of God, we should desire to reproduce the family likeness. 
Now, gratitude is uh, that pleasing affection of the mind which arises from a sense of favor received and by which the possessor is excited to make all the returns of love and service in his power. A, an illustration of gratitude uh, it was I found a, a story about Mother Teresa. Mother Teresa tells this story in an address to the National Prayer Breakfast back in 1994. She tells the story of one evening she and some more uh, sisters went out and we picked up four people from the street, she says. One of them was in a very terrible condition. I told the sisters to take care of the other three and I will take care of the one who looks the worst. So I did for her all that my love could do. I put her in bed and there was such a beautiful smile on her face, Sister Teresa says. She took hold of my hand and as she said, and say it only two words. Thank you. And then she died. It could not have uh, helped, but the, I could not exam, help but to examine, Sister Teresa says, my conscience before her. What would I say if I were in her place? My answer was very simple. I would have tried to draw a little attention to myself. And isn't that what we try to do a lot of times? She says, I would have said, I'm hungry. I'm dying. I'm in pain or something like that. But she gave me much more, Sister Teresa says. She gave me her grateful love and she died with a smile on her face. Gratitude brings a smile, and becomes a gift to others. This Samaritan did not try to draw attention to himself, but instead he gave Jesus his grateful love by showing his appreciation for what Jesus did for him. Now, at the border of Samaria and Judea, Jesus healed 10 lepers at one time, and the fact that the miracle involved the Samaritan made it even more significant. Jesus used uh, this event to teach a lesson about gratitude to God. The account begins uh, with 10 unclean men in Luke chapter 17, verse 11 through 13, all of whom were lepers. The Jews and Samaritans would not normally live together. But misery loves company, and all ten were outcast with the same disease. But what, a, what, what difference does birth make if you are experiencing a living death? These men had hope, for Jesus was there, and they cried out for mercy. The word translates master is the same one Peter used in Luke chapter 5, verse 5. And it means chief commander. In other words, they were expressing the fact that they believed that Jesus could do anything, including heal them. They knew that Jesus was totally in command of e even diseases and death, and they trusted him to help them. The account continues by referring to nine ungrateful men in uh, Luke chapter 17, verse 17. Jesus commanded the men to go show themselves to the priest, which in itself was an act of faith, for they had not yet been cured. When they turned to obey, they were completely healed for their obedience was evidence of their faith. You should have, uh, you, you, you would ex have expected all 10 men to return to Jesus and thank him for a new start in their lives. 
but only one returned. And he was not even a Jew. How grateful the men should have been for the providence of God that brought Jesus into their area. For the love that caused him to pay attention to them and their needs. And for the grace and the power of God that brought about their healing. They should have formed an impromptu a uh, men's chorus and sung a psalm like Psalms 103 all together. But before we judge them too harshly, what is our own GQ? Our own gratitude quotient? Or how much gratitude would we have shown or do we show? When the Lord has blessed us and we know he has done something for us that no, uh, no one else could do. How often do we take our blessings for granted and fail to thank the Lord? Or that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. That's Psalms 107 verse 8. Too often we are content to enjoy the gift, but we forget the giver. We are quick to pray, but slow to praise. Luke account closes with an unusual man. In Luke uh, chapter 17, verse 15 through 19, the Samaritan shouted glory to God and fell at Jesus' feet to praise him and give him thanks. It would have been logical for him to have followed the other men. You know how it is when we follow the crowd and gone to the temple. But he first came back to the Lord Jesus with his sacrifice of praise. Psalms 107 and verse 22 says, and let them offer sacrifice sacrifices of thanksgiving and tell of his deeds in songs of joy. Hebrews 13 and 15 says, By him therefore let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips giving thanks to his name. This pleases the Lord more than all of the sacrifice of the other men. Even though they were obeying the law. Psalms 51 verse 15 through 17 says, O oh, oh Lord, open thou my lips and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. For thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offerings. The sacrifice of God are a broken spirit and a broken and contrite heart. O oh God, thou wilt not despise. Instead of going to the priest, the Samaritan became a priest and he built his altar at the feet of Jesus. By coming to Jesus, this Samaritan received something greater than physical healing. He was also saved from his sin. Jesus said, your faith has saved you. The same words that he spoke to the repentant woman who anointed his feet in Luke chapter 7, verse 50. The Samaritan nine's friends were declared clean by the priests, but this Samaritan was declared saved by the Son of God. While it is wonderful to experience the miracle of physical healing, it is even more wonderful to experience the miracle of eternal salvation. Every child of God should cultivate the gratitude that this Samaritan displayed. It not only opens the heart to further blessings, but glorify God and pleases Jesus. An unthankful heart is fertile soil 
for all kinds of sin. Romans chapter one, verse 21 says, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but were become, but became vain in their imagination and their foolish hearts were darkened. I, I want to say that again. An unthankful heart is fertile soil for all kinds of sin. Now to know the true and living God is to know his son. And to know his son is to know the one who died to save us. He died on an old rugged cross to pay the price for all of our sins. And all have sinned and come short of God's glory. And then the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through his son, Jesus Christ. They removed the son from the cross and buried him in a borrowed tomb. And here's where the game changes. On the third day early in the morning, God raised him up with all power in his hand. And, and, and I don't know about you, but for what he did for me on that old rugged cross, I'm thankful. I'm forever thankful because there's nobody that could have done what Jesus did for me that Friday. And then if that wasn't enough, he continues to bless us over and over and over again. Each morning, we wake up with brand new mercy. We wake up to grace that is sufficient with, for whatever obstacles, whatever problems, whatever we might need grace for. And enough grace to pass it on. For all of his goodness and kindness, I am forever grateful. And I learned to be more grateful from this story of this Samaritan that was healed of his leprosy. And he turned around when he saw that he was healed. And told Jesus thankful that he was thankful. And he praised him. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, thanks for teaching us to be thankful to you and to, te to, to each other. Uh, thank you for reminding us that we are blessed. And we show our blessings by our gratitude to you. Thank you for each moment's breath that you allow us to take. Thank you for the saliva that continually keeps our tongue from sticking to the roof of our mouth. Thank you for the liquid that flows out of our tear ducts that does more than, than relieve the pain that we go through, but it also keeps our eyes from getting dry. So much that you do. And we forget to say thank you for, for it all we thank you. In the masterful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining us again for our Sunday morning worship experience at Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church of Memphis Incorporated. Uh, uh, when the Lord does lead us to open back up, I pray that you will stump some of you that are not members already, that you will at least stop by and, and let us know that you listen to some of these uh, uh, Bible studies and uh, sermons that we uh, posted on YouTube uh, while we were uh, away from one another only physically, and then uh, 
give me a call sometime at the church if you uh, your church is closed and you want to participate in communion service on the second Sunday at 1015 each uh, second Sunday of the month. We do uh, uh, have a drive up uh, communion service and uh, we'd be glad to share with you and, and have you as a part of that. So when we open back up, come by and let us know that or give us a call or something and let us know that you're listening and hopefully you're being blessed and that will help to encourage us. That would be your way of, of telling us thanks. And we thank you so much for tuning in. Mount Sinai, I love you and I'm so grateful to be your pastor. Until the next time, take care, wear your mask, uh, practice social distancing, and wash your hands often. And please exercise your right to vote between now and November 3rd. Please do that. Well, that's it. So long. Bye-bye.